Hi, I'm Dr. Chet Rehal, former chair of the Department of Cardiovascular Medicine and a practicing interventional cardiologist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Today, I'm joined by my colleagues, Dr. Naveen Pereira and Dr. Michael Farku, the principal investigators of the recently presented Taylor PCI trial that was uh, presented at the late-breaking clinical trial sessions of the virtual ACC 2020. First of all, Naveen and Mike, congratulations on, on the trial coming to fruition and the very exciting presentation this past weekend. Thanks, Chet. Uh, it's really been a privilege and pleasure to present the trial at the ACC uh, virtually. It's an amazing job done by the ACC. And of course, congratulations to you as study chair of Taylor PCI and my good friend and colleague at uh, the Peter Monk Cardiac Center at the University of Toronto, Mike Farco. So, I, so Mike and uh, Naveen, I really want to ask both of you, we've seen the presentation, is how do clinicians like me take these results, digest them, and apply them to our patients? Maybe Naveen, I'll start with you and then I'll turn it over to Mike for your comments on the, on the real practicality of the trial. Right, so Chet, as you know, uh, patients who carry the CYP2C19 loss of function genotype uh, there have been a lot of studies showing a significant association of that particular genotype when they take clopidogrel with increased ischemic events. So this is a high-risk population identified by their genetic makeup. So what we did with Taylor PCI is really focus on that group and demonstrate that, uh, and attempted to demonstrate whether uh, genotype guidance in that group would be better than just giving everybody clopidogrel. Uh, and, and the results basically showed that there was a 34 uh, percent reduction in events. So there, uh, there were about 5.9 uh, percent uh, events in everybody getting clopidogrel uh, versus uh, a 4 percent event rate in those getting uh, a genotype guidance treatment. So there was still a pretty significant uh, difference, but it was statistically not significant because we were expecting a 50% reduction. Wow. We saw a 34% reduction. So, you know, it was, um, I, I think, a modest effect, um, but it was not uh, statistically significant. So with a p-value of 0.055, I mean, we just missed it, but the, the fact remains that there was a reduction uh, in events in the genotype-directed arm. So, so my question, and maybe I'll turn to Dr. Farku now. Mike, you've been interested in precision medicine for some time, and it's been difficult to demonstrate that clear benefits for individualization of pharmacotherapy. Uh, how, in your estimation, should clinicians take the results of Taylor PCI and incorporate them into the day-to-day -day management of their patients? Well, again, Chet, you know, we've tried to explore the opportunities um, from a research perspective, the advantages of a personalized approach. And of course, this is quite attractive to healthcare providers, um, certainly to insurance and into government agencies and state-run uh, healthcare systems to find ways in which we can uh, target therapies that are emerging to the populations most likely to benefit. And I think here we have a simple bedside test that's very cost effective, and we're using it in patients who are largely uh, being managed with clopidogrel. And that was a big surprise to us from the beginning is that the majority of patients, up to 70% of patients in our centers in the Taylor trial, which include Canada, US, Mexico, and Korea, are being treated with clopidogrel. And therefore, there was a real advantage to, uh, to evaluating patients who may be at highest risk um, for not being able to metabolize the drug, and therefore they were the patients that could be uh, designated for the newer therapies. Naveen, how does this trial compare and contrast with popular genetics? That's a great uh, question, Chad. Uh, so one of the questions that's been raised is why bother with genetic testing at all? Why not give everybody Ticaglor or Brasigrel? And uh, po so popular genetics basically did just that. One arm was giving everybody ticaglor. The other arm was very similar to our arm. It was a genotype guided arm. So most of the patients got clopidogrel. Those with the uh, CYP2C19 loss of function uh, genetic makeup uh, got uh, ticaglor. And so 
If you look at the event rates in the genotyping guided arm of popular genetics, they, just the ischemic events, event rates, they reported a composite endpoint of ischemic end bleeding. But if you just look at the ischemic rates, it was roughly for the genotype guided arm where most got clopidogrel, it was about f in the mid 4% range. If you, if you look at the event rate in the Ticaglo group, it was 4.7% something in terms of ischemic events. It just goes to show how, f you know, how much we moved from Plato when the event rates were in the 10 to 12% range with the new drug eluting stents and improved uh, guideline directed therapy. So if you look at the event rate in our genotype guided arm, it's the same, it's about 4.4% where just the loss of function patients get ticaglor, everybody else gets clopidogrel. So this is just remarkable that if you take it across, popular was patients with STEMI, our patients were acute coronary syndrome and some stable patients. The event rates in the mid 4% range all across, which really creates um, uh, a case for us you know, adopting a precision met medicine uh, um, approach uh, towards uh, treating them with antiplatelet drug therapy. Thank you. Mike, I, I assume you're going to be doing a pharmacoeconomic analysis as well of these data. And uh, you personally have had experience in the U.S. healthcare system and the Canadian healthcare system, and you've collaborated with people from around the globe. Can you tell us what you're either expecting or or how important you feel a pharmacoeconomic analysis will be of the Taylor PCI data? Well, Chet, obviously, um, whenever we have an effective management strategy, which I believe this demonstrates here with the Taylor PCI trial, it's really a proof of concept. Um, cost effectiveness, pharmacoeconomic analysis is always uh, warranted and I think welcome. But in this particular case, I think it's even more important because the guidelines across many jurisdictions, Canada being sort of an exception where we have voted as, uh, for Ticagrelor as frontline therapy, but for most other jurisdictions, including Mexico and Korea and the other international sites in our network, uh, patients are being recommended to be treated on one of these therapies and therefore a therapy that's generic, well tolerated, given to millions of patients like clopidogrel uh, is the idea that we can evaluate whether it's cost effective to actually institute a pharmacogenomic strategy is very, very important because it will have a tremendous uh, implications for healthcare systems, the cost of drugs, and will allow us to spend resources potentially in other arenas. Thank you, Mike. Both in cardiovascular space and otherwise. Naveen, a, a, a lot of this is predicated on doing a point of care genotype test. Okay. Uh, you mentioned this in the presentation, of course, but I wonder if you could describe how this was done in Taylor PCI in a little more detail so the audience can understand what a point of care genotype test looks like. Right. So uh, this was one of the keys uh, uh, to success of Taylor PCI uh, to be able to use a point of care genotyping. Uh, a lot of the pharmacogenetic clinical trials, which were more blood-based, so for example, if you look at the warfarin trials, et cetera, it took time for the uh, blood sample to go to the laboratory, the laboratory to process it for the genetic variants and to return it. And the key with pharmacogenetics is early institution of um, change in medical therapy based on a genotype information. So the shorter the time, especially after PCI in patients with MI, acute coronary syndrome, the better it is. So we use a point of care assay that was made by Spartan Biosciences, a Canadian company actually. And all that was required was for the study coordinators to get trained on, you know, uh, initially uh, what we did was a validation phase. So study coordinators trained on 20 volunteers. They had to take a buckle swab, uh, put it in the uh, solution for PCR, it's a little assay, and then they put it in this box uh, and get a result within an hour, That's 60 all it minutes. Is. It's bedside. So you could have, potentially, you could have it in the cath lab, like you check for APTT uh, for heparin. And, and uh, it got FDA approved. Um, and in our trial, we showed there was a 99% concordance rate between the genotyping by this 
point of care assay with more laboratory based uh, testing, what we call as statement genotyping. So, so this point, this simple point of care assay that can be done easily by a technician or a nurse in the cath lab room right. um, would really facilitate an individualized approach to antiplatelet therapy following PCI. And for interventional cardiologists, I think in terms of minutes rather right. than days, I right. think that's really important. Right, absolutely, Chad. Mike, <clears throat> so let me now um, ask sort of the, the critical translational question yeah. here. If you had a stent, what would you do? Well, again, again, if, if, if you know, this is very much based on hospital practice, the use of antiplatelet therapy. But in many of the centers that largely use clopidogrel as the frontline therapy for PCI patients, I believe that this is the genotyping is warranted um, and is supported by the evidence in this trial. Um, I feel that we would be instituting testing uh, routinely. Um, I think it's very practical, it's cost effective, and I think we've demonstrated although our p-value is uh, around the 0.05 level and not certainly the most robust uh, finding at 12 months, uh, I do believe that there are, this is warranted and that will change practice. And um, I think that th that is sort of the reception that we're getting amongst our investigators. And Mike, you're extending follow-up now too, right? Exactly, so we have uh, been funded by the NHLBI for follow-up out to 24 months and it's probable that that will tighten up the confidence intervals and we will reach statistical significance. Of course, we've always concentrated in the, in the trials of personalized medicine, particularly on clinical significance. The fact that we see such a robust 35% reduction, I th I'm hoping that at the 24 month, that by tightening the confidence intervals, we'll bring home statistical significance and we'll still have a robust uh, clinical finding. Naveen, I'm going to ask you a related question. Trials looking at platelet phenotyping have been negative. Why, why are these genotype trials more positive than negative? Well, um, the you know, platelet function testing uh, is a very difficult field, I think, in terms of uh, what the assay variability is uh, between the various assays that are used. Uh, light aggregometry would be excellent to use, but it's so difficult to implement by the bedside. Um, and there's always that controversy that does platelet function testing always correlate with um, real okay. cardiovascular outcomes? I okay. think uh, what led up to Taylor PCI was a solid body of evidence showing that there was a remarkable association of uh, having this loss of function CYP2C19 genotype and adverse outcomes. And it makes sense from a pharmacological perspective. Uh, if you're a heterozygote for CYP2C19, you're one third less active clopidogrel in your bloodstream. If you're homozygote, it could be up to 50% less active clopidogrel. And so if you have less clopidogrel, you could be at increased risk of events. And we saw that in Taylor PCI. If you look at the composite endpoint breakup, stent thrombosis, uh, there were about eight cases of stent thrombosis uh, within the conventional clopidogrel group, but just two cases of stent thrombosis in the genotyping guided group. So that's a pure phenotype of the antiplatelet effect of clopidogrel. The other in interesting thing we saw was in the first three months, there was an 80% risk reduction, 80% risk reduction in the first three months, which I think is a very important perspective because as we know, in the world of dual antiplatelet therapy, those three month window post PCI is turning out to be a very critical uh, point. And Mike and I have talked about this, if we had to now take a retroscope and say, if we timed a pharmacogenetic trial uh, endpoint to be at three months when the true effect of your genetic makeup would show up because you don't expect a long-term effect. The same thing with warfarin and INR. I mean, the true effect of genetics is when you give your first, second mm, dose of warfarin. So the first three months playing an important role in this drug gene interaction is critical. Um, I, I, Mike, you, you have 
this whole pharmacogenomic concept, precision medicine trials, your opinion about timing and effect size. You know, I, I, I feel the weight of this trial is not just to address antiplatelet therapy of PSA. It really is a proof of concept of the personalized medicine approach. And we learned a lot about it. The two main challenges we have is the effect size we're trying to detect. It's not in the 20 to 25% relative risk reduction that we traditionally sample size and uh, for our statistical assumptions in trials, but it may be in the order of 50 to 60% reduction by targeting these patients at risk. The second element, of course, is the timing of the endpoint. And we've learned a lot from the cancer folks having now exercised and conducted the Taylor trial that maybe it's the early effects that we're looking for, which shows some promise that we can actually answer many, many questions by performing these kinds of analyses. So I think the methodologic and statistical assumptions that we use for personalized medicine trials will, will be advanced by the Taylor PCI trial, in addition to answering the issue of propitical pharmacogenomics. So Mike and Naveen, I'd like to thank you for a very engaging conversation today and my congratulations to you both and to the entire network of Taylor PCI, the investigators, the coordinators, the international sites that made this I feel landmark study possible and feasible. It's been uh, really great. Uh, I hope all of you out there have enjoyed uh, this conversation. I certainly have learned a lot from it and we look forward to having many more uh, with you. So from the Mayo Clinic, this is Chet Rehal signing off. I hope to see you again. Thank you.